Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be inconsistent romantic interest. Well, I've got an email here from a guy. He's 25, has a obviously a good friend who introduced him to my work, told him about my first book, How to Be a 3% Man. So the guy, he's I think he said he's just starting his second time reading my book. So he's still relatively new. And he ran, ran into a girl that he knew from grade school, and they started talking, and they've been going out, uh, hooking up a little bit. But what's interesting is he started following what I teach in the book, and he was taking his time to respond, not in such a rush. And obviously, she noticed this, that he was acting different than all the other guys that she was talking to that were trying to get her attention. And so this caused him to start texting and calling and pursuing more, doing more Snapchats, things of, of that nature. But obviously he's feeling a little unsure. He's not feeling confident because obviously he's still new to my work. So he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he's getting good, sustainable results right now. And this is kind of like where guys that are new to my work, they read the book a couple of times, they meet a girl, they start hooking up, things progress like this, and they're like, hey, I don't need to read this thing 10 to 15 times. And then they completely neglect all of the relationship stuff that's in the back of the book. And then several months down the road, because they didn't learn the fundamentals is when things go sideways. And some of them obviously end up booking phone sessions because they're in a panic because they didn't follow instructions properly. So my goal with this particular email, obviously I want to help this guy tweak his game, but it's to point out where guys typically go wrong with this because obviously she's communicating and noticing that he's not making the same kind of effort or responding in the same way that the other guys are, but obviously it's having a positive effect on how she feels about him which is the most important thing because if she feels something for him she's going to feel more attraction and when you're dating that's what you want you want the woman to become more attracted to you than any of the other potential guys that are trying to get her attention and therefore as time goes by you want her to give you all of her attention and interest and only focus on you and blow all the other guys off. So it's a process, but you got to be consistent in how you show up. And like this guy, he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's got he's got enough from the videos and the one time that he's been through the book that he's getting the good results. But obviously, he's not in a place of confidence. He doesn't feel certain of himself. And that's where I want guys to be. I want guys to be certain, comfortable, to feel peace in their bodies so they can focus on their mission and purpose in life and then just respond when they have these interactions, when women they're dating reach out to them. So the attraction grows and eventually she asks you to be the boyfriend, to eventually be the husband, that kind of thing, if that's what you're looking for. So it's a good, really good email to kind of see the transition from pickup and the early stage dating and then obviously ultimately after that when you actually get into a relationship and being able to maintain it. So I had a quote that I wrote and then when I go through his email. And the quote says, it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to guys whose romantic interest they are unsure of. Despite what some women might say or believe, they feel stronger romantic interest in and emotion towards guys whose attention, interest, and validation they have to earn. When it comes to dating and attraction, Less really is more. Scarcity creates value. It's always best if men pursue women no more than 20 to 30% of the time. Why? Women are natural nurturers and are much more empathetic and in touch with their emotions than men are. A masculine man who is purpose and mission driven in life will be busy and focused, but will make time for the right woman who catches his attention. Women are relationship focused and men are mission and adventure focused. Like you've probably heard me say many times in the past, if you go back 60, 70 years ago, look at the older movies and women are always trying to get the guy's attention. The guys are always purpose and mission focused. They're trying to achieve something 
in life. They're trying to make their dreams a reality. And in a lot of instances, what you kind of notice is they're really not interested in settling down and dating and babies and the white picket fence and all that. But obviously, these women are attractive and they're determined. They've decided what guy that they want because they picked the guy that they want and they go out of their way to get the guy's attention. And obviously, over the course of the movie, he kind of slowly relents. And then obviously, by the end of the movie, they live happily ever after. This was a good healthy archetype of natural masculine and feminine energy interacting in the way that was common knowledge in our society but obviously since then with the unbalanced feminist movement to where it's kind of gone the pendulum has kind of swung all the other way to where it's just kind of like a man-hating movement and then you look at normal television programs that we have today or movies the man is always the bumbling idiot that needs the woman to bring order to the chaos of his life. And she basically acts like the stoic mommy to him and she solves everything. And when you behave this way in real life, women are totally repulsed by this behavior and constantly stick you in friend zone. So just when you look at what you've seen in the media in Hollywood over the last 60, 70, 80 years – I mean, it's just completely flipped the the roles. Women are taught to act like men and men are taught to act like women. And universally, they're getting repulsed by each other. That's obviously not a good thing. So with that said, obviously, in books like mine, 3% Man will help you balance that out so you get that natural sexual polarity where women play their role and they're comfortable in it. It feels natural to them. It comes natural to them. And it's the same thing with men. It comes natural to being this way. Because when you feel peace in your life, when you feel peace in your body, you feel peace in your relationship, you feel peace in your home, you feel content. And you, when you feel content, you actually feel more masculine energy and you feel more ambition. You feel more drive. You have more of a desire to do things and accomplish things because you've got so many great things going on in the home front or in your your personal life. So the goal is to find this sweet spot here where you can feel comfortable and sure of yourself and then the relationship part of your life or your personal life or your dating life becomes something that's a complement to it and not something that's constantly giving you stress and freaking you out and worrying you because when you're worried all the time and you're in a fearful state, your decisions are not going to be very good and they're not going to be very efficient. They're actually going to bring more chaos into your life. And so if you're in a place of fear, you'll end up bringing even more fear into your personal life and that will spill over into your professional life and then start having a neg- negative effect on your career or your business, which is obviously not a good thing for a man to be experiencing. You want the personal aspect of your life to be something that adds value to your life, that makes things easier in life, makes it easier to go for the things you want and not something that creates so much worry and so much stress in your life that you can't even function. Because then it just becomes a, and you know, it, when it comes to flying a plane, it becomes like a flat spin that you just can't get out of. So with that said, let's go through his email. He says, hey there, coach. I first want to thank you for sharing your work, for calling it the way it is, and for playing the role you have in our growth. A good friend recommended 3% Man to me this past summer, and now I'm starting to go through it for my second time. Obviously, he's talking about my first book, 3% Man. You can read for free at understandrelationships.com. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. If you haven't read it yet, don't be one of those guys that's thinking you're just going to watch these videos and cherry pick. The idea is... The book gives you the baseline fundamentals and these videos are meant to help you fine tune your experience based on real world situations. This is a guy that right now, this this particular email literally came in this morning as I was looking through all the different emails to, and I thought it just jumped out at me. I thought this is the perfect email to go over. So he says, I'm 25 years old. I just started a big boy job and I just moved into my new apartment about two months ago. I ran into a girl I went to grade school with while I was out for a drink. She followed me on Instagram and eventually messaged me. 
So that's it. I would have personally gotten the number, but maybe you weren't that into her. But it shows really high interest on her part that she followed you on Instagram and sent you a direct message. This is a woman who's making it easy because she has high romantic interest. She's acting just like women are supposed to act. She she likes a guy. She picks a guy. She's going, hey, hey, I like you. Hey, pay attention to me. That's typically what they do. But as a man, you're supposed to know what to do after that point, after they get you your attention. We started to communicate via social media and text. I followed what I learned in 3% Man, letting her wonder about me, not communicating with her too much via the phone, and keeping conversation funny and lighthearted. So far, so good. Because at the end of the day... If you have lots of choices and lots of options, you're a busy guy. You have She's not the only woman trying to get your attention, especially if you have a big social media presence. You're always going to have people that are trying to get your attention. So you have to be selective. You Not everybody makes the cut. That's the harsh reality. You want the best for yourself. And same thing with him. If he has lots of other choices and lots of options, he wants to make sure he ends up with a girl that really makes it easy and really makes him feel wanted and desired, which obviously, at least at this point, she's doing. So he says, during our second hangout, she mentioned she was unaware of my interest in her and thought we were hanging out as friends. So I don't know if he means a sec- he went out with her on a date and this was a second date or if the second hangout is the second one is the only time he's seen her since they met. And obviously, that when they ran into each other in the bar, that was the first hangout. So they're texting, and he's probably, you know, think about it. She's a pretty girl. I mean, the reality is when you're in your early 20s, especially like you graduate high school, you go off to college, that is like the only time in your life where you're going to be surrounded by that many beautiful, single, and available women. And from that perspective... She's probably got lots of dudes giving her attention, which obviously she does because she, in a roundabout way, brings it up in a little bit. But you can see how well being this way, it's like she's got 10 other dudes calling her, texting her all the time, telling her how much they like her because that's what you see in all the movies and the TV programs. Hey, you got to let the girl know you how much you like her right away, how much you really super duper like her, and she'll like you back. It doesn't work that way in the real world. All these guys are trying to get her attention and validation instead of being focused on their mission and purpose because they've been brainwashed by the media in Hollywood pushing this dysfunctional, messed up way of human interactions. So if other women are or other dudes are trying to get her attention and she's you're not you're taking time to reply, you're busy sometimes. She texts you at night, seven, eight o'clock at night. You're either out with your friends or maybe you're on another date. Maybe you're hanging out, maybe you're doing some of your family. But point being is a man who's busy and has an active social life is not going to be available 24-7 to, to chit-chat. If you're in a, in a big corporate meeting in the middle of the day and your big boy job and a girl that you're talking to texts you, you're not going to step out of the meeting oh this girl that i went out with over the weekend's texting me so let me just respond to her real quick that's not going to go over real well with the people that you work for so it's like if you're busy you'll get to her later at the end of the day it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear it doesn't mean they're being purposely devious it just means the women have to work for these guys attention because they have a lot going on and they're not the only women trying to get his attention a high value man has lots of opportunities and lots of interest so he has to be selective that's what you want to be you want to present the image that you're selective even if you don't really have a lot going on you want to act as if and then fill your life up with activities and people and work and a mission and purpose so you actually act the way your life becomes So he says, during our second hangout, she mentioned she was unaware of my interest in her and thought we were hanging out as friends. I cleared this up on the spot and asked why she was unsure about my interest. So it's interesting what she says. She said, because I was inconsistent, as in I wouldn't look for her every day. I take long to get back to her and sometimes even leave her on read. This is true. 
I did do these things, whereas guys who are interested in her are usually always trying to get her attention and looking for her. So you notice how that works? She's got all these guys going, I like you, I like you, I like you, and yet she's paying no attention to them, and she's out on a date with this guy going, why, don't you, why aren't you as interested as these other guys? Isn't that funny how that works? Common sense would say, oh, he's not contacting me, he doesn't care, screw him. But it's all about how she feels. Fast forward two more hangouts where I made dinner at my place, opened some wine, and later had her on her back. You had her on your her back, huh? Hmm. Wonder what that can mean. <laughs> Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Keep it simple. A man's job in the courtship, as I discussed in 3% Man, is just simply to create the next romantic opportunity for a sex to happen. So let's look at this. So on the date, she's like basically saying, I don't really think you like me very much. So in a way, that that statement bringing that up is she's seeking his attention and validation. Where do I stand with this guy? Does he like? Does he even like me? Do all these other guys like me, but why doesn't this guy like me? She's more interested in finding out. Even though the way she brings it up, it's kind of like she's bothered by it, but she's bothered by it in a good way. She's seeking his attention and validation because she wants to get him all to herself and assimilate him like the Borg. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. Fast forward two more hangouts where I made dinner at my place, opened some wine, had her on her back. And the next weekend, I took her out again, came back to my place, whined. And although it felt like sex wasn't going to happen, it did. How is James Bond always acting? How does Daniel Craig's character always act in James Bond when a woman says, no way, you're not getting into my pants. He just goes, he just smiles. It's going to happen later on in the evening. It's inevitable. I hear that all the time. And of course, what happens? She ends up on her back. That's why it's important to follow the process that's in 3% Man. The process. Because guys that don't know any better go back to their house and they don't think sex is going to happen and then it doesn't because they don't understand the process. The process is laid out in detail in the book. Ever since she called me out on my inconsistent pattern, I've talked to her more and given her more of me to make my interest known. Just don't overdo it. No more than 20 to 30%. Because the idea is, think about it from this perspective. I don't know if he likes me. Do you like me? Of course, babe. You're the only one for me. Oh, he's so sweet. He's the best. He's the best. It's basically how, how it goes. You let her wonder. It's like you're not so much doing it on purpose. You're just busy handling things. And then she kind of feels like you're not paying attention to her. You don't care. And you're like, babe, of course I care. And then you make time for her. In other words, does he care about me? And you're like, yes. And you sweep her off her feet and you romance her. Of course. It's just the process. It's the it's like the salsa dance, the ebb and flow, the up and down. Does he like me? Oh, he loves me. Do I like him? I don't know. Where'd he go? Honey? Oh, he loves me. He cares about me. Oh, he's back. Oh, it's just the back and forth. Just the way it is, like Mother Nature. I get rained all fucking weekend. And it was supposed to rain until Wednesday or Tuesday of this week. And then today I get up, it was supposed to be raining, like it said 90% chance of rain when I went to bed, and now it's like completely clear all days. It's just the weather. It's That's just Mother Nature. Don't get upset or riled. Just follow the process. Follow the process in 3% Man. And it'll all make sense. It's all an art. He says, it sounds like I bent for her or let her steer me out of my center but after i gave her some more of me sex happened on back-to-back -back weekends so to me it sounds like i did something right don't you think well the point being is that you took corrective action in other words you did everything right because then she was unsure of where she stood with you and asked you about it and you're like of course and you swept her up and you romanced her and she's like he does care about me he's so wonderful He's so different. He's so unlike all the other guys. There's just something about you I can't quite put my finger on. You'll hear that. 
if you're not already hearing it already. So that's the, the point. It doesn't mean you're supposed to be a cold fish. It's like you're just going slightly slower than she is to the point where she gets impatient and frustrated and tries to get your attention. Now, when a guy does that, when he gets frustrated and upset because he's not getting enough of the woman's attention, he's pouting like a, a girl. And it's extremely unattractive. It's not masculine. And so when women are unsure of where they stand with you, they seek to get your attention and validation and then you give it to them because you're just going a little bit slower than they are. And for almost 100% of the guys that come to my work and are watching these videos, they're always doing too much. They're moving too fast. And if they slow it down and they get into the zone where this guy's kind of floating a little bit now, it just seems like easy and effortless. But you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to get in a fearful state and think, oh, I better pursue her because then she's going to think I don't like her. And then you start blowing up her phone. And then the, the what happens is the roles reverse. It goes from you only doing 20 to 30% of calling and texting and pursuing to you doing like 70 to 80% of calling, texting and pursuing. When that happens, it it's 100% guaranteed that you're going to get to a point where she's like, I'm confused. I'm not sure where I'm able to be. I, I, there's no chemistry. There's no spark. Something's missing. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something's missing. It's because they haven't had time to be alone and engage with their emotions. They're too certain of where they stand and you're acting too feminine. That's why this ratio that no more, the guy should never do more than 20 to 30% of the calling, texting, and pursuing. That is the sweet spot. It is what it is. The numbers are what they are. If you don't believe me, go ahead and over pursue this girl and then she'll start treating you just like all these other guys that she's blowing off. <laughs> what you're doing is working. I want to keep raising her attraction for me. I want her to want me more and I want her to want me all to herself one day. What's the formula? Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Three H's, that's it. Doesn't say anything about a relationship on there. Doesn't say anything about a commitment. Does the thing about lovey-dovey, hang out, have fun, and hook up. That's the romance formula. That's it. Women want romance. They want to be in a love story. I'm not sure how often I should keep communicating with her. All right, you fucking schmuck. See this? Read this book 10 to 15 times. That's why it says read it 10 to 15 times. Because you're asking me a basic question that's in the book, and you obviously don't know it because you haven't been through it. And you're trying to cherry pick. Don't cherry pick it will burn you i've got tons and tons of emails and video newsletters i've done over the years where guys that didn't listen and they went into panic mode and they were in a great situation like you are right now and they screwed it up months down the road he says we text or snapchat pretty much every day or six days a week give or take again let her make sure she's reaching out first 20 to 30 percent of the time when i say reaching out first that means all conversation threads are closed. That means maybe you got plans made for the weekend. She's not waiting for a response from you and you're not waiting for a response from her. It's just out of the blue, surprising messages. That's, that's what you're looking for. That's who initiates contact first. As long as she's doing 70 to 80% of it, you're in the safe zone. The last thing I want to do is have her become bored of me, not wonder about me anymore, or just have her attraction level decrease. At the same time, I stepped up communication with her, and it seems to have worked well these past couple weekends, as you can see. Again, look at the ratio. You got to look at her actions, because it's going to wane. You might spend a couple weeks together, and you're, you're reaching out more, and then all of a sudden, it just kind of seems like she's kind of bored and not as interested, and you you might have to back off. Like I said, it usually happens really suddenly. You, you go from 20 to 30% of the pursuing, and then within a week or two, you're doing 60 to 70% of it. Because the first couple of days, you're doing that over pursuing. You're going, oh, no, it's fine. Oh, maybe she's just busy. Or It's like, no, her interest dropped a little. Just like Mother Nature. It was supposed to be crappy, a crappy day today, and it turns out it's gorgeous out. I can't wait. I'm going to finish this video. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to enjoy myself. Maybe go down to the beach. See what's going on down at the beach and have a good time. But you just never know. That's the way Mother Nature is. Women are unpredictable. So like I said, just be 
be prepared. You pursue more, you spend a lot of time together, you're going to notice at some point it's going to seem like she kind of gets a little bored and is not as into you. The quickest way to get somebody else's attention is to remove yours. That's why you want to match and mirror her behavior. If she backs off, you're going to back off. If she pursues a little more and reaches out more, you're going to get together more because she's making it easy to get together. If she starts backing off, you back off. That means you'll get together less, but over the course of the next week or two, it'll help correct things and she'll feel when she moves away from you that you move away from her and she'll want to pull you back. Guys make the mistake when they get in that situation where the woman backs away then they start pursuing more to make up for that and they never go back to the way it was. And then what happens is it completely flips and within a matter of weeks, they're doing 100% of their calling, texting, and pursuing. The woman's making no effort and on top of that, she's not making it easy to get together in person to hang out, have fun, and hook up. He says, our town is going to see another shutdown soon. I also don't want to fall into a routine where it looks like I just have her over for sex. I want her to fall for me. Well, don't be doing the same date. It says, have fun. Having fun, if you're having fun at your house, it's great. But yeah, you don't want to do the same date every weekend because then it looks like you're just inviting her over for a booty call. Go to dinner. Go have some fun. Go play some pool. Go to an arcade. Go ride some go-karts. Go have a picnic by the lake somewhere. Go to the beach. Do something fun. It doesn't have to be expensive, but at the end of the evening, the hookup part, the hookup part, obviously, you're going to be doing that at the house. So have a date and then, and remember the logistics of sex. You want to make sure that the dessert is at the end of the evening. That's why the hookup part is, is last. It's the end of the evening is the hookup part. That's where the fun and the bonding and you guys are all over each other. And again, because you're going a little slower than she is, by the time you finally get back to your house, she's ready to tear your clothes off because she's been tired of waiting for it. And that's, that's what you want. That makes it really super easy. He said, thanks, coach. I'm looking forward to your take. But like overall, you're doing great so far. But like I said... These questions you're asking, you're like, oh, what do I do? 20, 30%, no more. You shouldn't be pursuing more. But like I said, you got to be prepared for her to back off because that's where most guys get really squirrely as things go great for several weeks then the woman backs off and the guy's thinking, we've been dating for two months. We've been dating for three months. We've been dating for four weeks, whatever it happens to be. And now she seems to have gone cold. I got to do something. The illusion of action. And then they try to force things. They call too much. They text too much. They pursue too much. And then they don't stop. They don't back off. So matching and mirroring is really helpful to keep that ratio. And just don't freak out. Like say you spend a whole weekend together and then the next week you just get together once. And then you don't hear from her for a day or two. You you can't let that shit freak you out. Just got to understand it's the ebb and flow. It's just like Mother Nature. She's all over you just like this week. It was raining all weekend. It was supposed to rain today. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I wake up today, it's gorgeous out. There's no no sign of rain in the weather forecast. It's just like women. That's the way they are. I didn't make them that way. I'm just here to help you understand what they do, why they do it. And so also you can get my second book, Mastering Yourself, for free to understand relationships when you subscribe to the email newsletter. This is all about purpose, mission, self-reliance. Obviously, I do get into politics. If you tend to be more lefty communist socialist leaning there'll probably be some things in here that'll piss you off i definitely know there'll be some things in here about stuff that's been in the news over the last several years that you'll be shocked because what you were told didn't really happen that way but again both those books are available for free understandingrelationships.com obviously the sweet mug you can get at teespring.com the coach Corey wayne store and if you would like to talk to me personally you're in a you're having difficulty or challenges in your personal your professional life and you'd like my help with go to understandrelationships.com click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly until next time hang out have fun and hook up